So to install the limiting switches, there's two brackets. One goes on the uh, Y2 uh, axis arm, and then this one here goes on the Z. And there's a couple of outposts sticking out. And all we have to do is install the limiting switch with the two screws provided. And you want to keep the limiting switch flush with the front and back of the uh, bracket, just like so. So we'll go ahead and get those in there and tighten down. And we can mount that onto the Z-axis. Install those, you're going to need a 2.5 millimeter. They do provide it for you. And we take two of the bolts here. It takes a 4 millimeter Allen wrench. We'll go ahead and put those on the post. That looks good. And then the wire comes back behind here. And then we just take a wire tie, wire tie it to this post. We'll do that here in a little bit, but let's go ahead and get this one mounted. So with the shorter of the two brackets, we need to install these two outriggers here. And we can take our limiting switch for the Y and it'll mount same as the one on the Z, making sure that it's flush with the edge here. And then So the short wire is for the proximity switch on the z-axis and then we locate the green or the gray wire for the z and we see that has a three pin we simply plug that in and it doesn't snap together but all right now we're ready to uh, start wiring with electronics Alright, so the next thing we do is we need to remove the cover from the control board. So we have some thumb screws here. And when removing the cover, just remember the little bit controller part goes there so we don't want to damage that. There's two screws that mount the control board onto the uh, Y rail. And we also have a uh, PCB riser board and that just locks into here so we're going to go ahead and connect that. Just like so. Now we can take and uh, mount that to our wire rail. And then we can start wiring things up. So to mount the control board, we have these button head screws that was in the package using a four millimeter. We are going to go ahead and connect that right here.
and you want to make sure that you have the uh, power and the USB connection on the back side here. So that's connected. Now we can start connecting our wires. Now everything is labeled to what goes where. So this is for Z, this is going to be for Y1, and which is this side, Y2, the other side, and then we also have the X axis. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the Z first. And then we're we'll look for the Y1 right there. Y2. And then we have the X. like that. Alright. And then we have some extra wires here that we'll be plugging in for our proximity switches. So this will be for our Z. Z is the third one in. Let's see here. Let's run this in behind. Trying to make a nice neat job out of it. Nice. We have a Y, second one over. And we'll get that in there behind all the big wires also. And then we have the Z, or the X, excuse me. goes in the slot number one. There we go. Okay, so wiring everything up is uh, relatively simple. We have a labeled X and then we have the Z. So the Z is going to be for the Z-axis motor. And we're going to go ahead and put that one together. And then we have the Z Traveler here for our stepper motor, for X. I said Z, but I meant X. All right. And then what we can do is we can get these out of the way. We can wire tie these up here and keep them off of everything. And then, of course, the Z for the uh, proximity, we already connected. And you have the Y2 arm for the stepper motor here. You can go ahead and connect that. And also for the Y1. All of our wiring is now connected. And... Uh, Control board is connected. So now is a little bit of cleanup. We can start adding some wire tie clamps on here and get things nice and clean looking. So let's do that. Now supposedly all seven of these wires are going to fit into this little hole down here. But I don't see how so, we're going to put them in one at a time here. There, that looks pretty. Next, we can install our wire tie clamps. So, we have five of these. And let's see, get those out here. And a couple little screws with it. it takes a two millimeter Allen. And then we'll just go ahead and put those into place. Now we can install the router. So this is the uh, carbide router that I purchased with the unit. And it has a collar here because of the size of the router. It slips in. 
perfect. And we'll take our four millimeter Allen wrench and we'll tighten that down. And we'll run our cable through the drag train chain and we'll wire tie that in behind. So we run our uh, wire in here behind our wires. Now we'll just wire tie that up against this post. Now with two wire ties, we want to make a loop, put it through our wire clamp, and then make another loop for here. Keep the cord dangling, and then we can wire tie this one right to the uh, loop. And that keeps the wires away from the other wires. Now we just have to put a little bit of a wire clamp over here, wire ties, and we can call that about done. Alright, so for this we'll need three wire ties. We're going to run one wire tie through just like that and we're gonna go ahead and put that on the outside here and then we'll put one on the inside For the ones on the outside we're going to trim and leave about half inch or so on each cable end and then on the inside, we won't trim it at all. So when you uh, put your wire ties on, it should look something similar to that. That'll keep it from moving in or out. And once that cable relaxes a little bit, that'll hang down just about right amount. All right, now let's square this thing up. Okay, to make sure our machine is square, when we started out for the end rails, we put these uh, four button heads in per side, 16 total. We're just going to go ahead and loosen those up a little bit more. Remember, we only had them hand tight. We're going to do that all the way around. And on our y-axis, we're going to go ahead and loosen the four screws that are holding that in place. And they should just be hand tight. Do that to both sides. Now what we want to do is slide the X axis rail forward until it touches the end. And we want to make sure that there's no gaps on the ends. So by sliding that slowly forward we want to make sure that we have good contact on both sides. We don't want any gaps here on the ends. And then we'll go ahead and tighten these four bolts. Then we'll slide the carriage back and we'll do the same to the back side. And then we can tighten our X axis up. So let's uh, go ahead and get these tightened because that looks pretty good. And then we'll do the same to the back. Well, you want to make sure and maintain pressure pulling this forward as we tighten these up because we don't want any gaps. So we're going to go ahead and Give that one a good turn. Do the same on this side. Now we can tighten up the rest of them. Okay. Now we're going to slide it back and repeat the same process. Okay, so the back was done. It went 
fairly easy. You slide that back, make sure both sides are touching, tighten down your bolts, good to go. Now we can tighten down our X rail here. There we go. Looks pretty good. All right, we'll put a tape measure on one more time. Make sure from corner to corner, we still got our uh, measurement. And then our table's just about done. So from side to side, lock that in. I've got from the outside here 60 and yeah, about 3 sixteenths of an inch. The outside. This side, sixty and three sixteenths. That table is square. Now we can go ahead and tighten down all of the bolts that are holding down our MDF, and uh, then we put on our sweepy. We're almost done. Alright, so one of the last things that we can install is our little sweepy. And it has a dust collector here for large hose. It also has a collet that you can insert. Take this one out, put this one in for a smaller diameter. It also has two uh, ends here. One has the, the broom and the other without so you can get close to your workspace and not have to deal with the brushes. So we'll just go ahead and install that. That slips under here like so. And the height will depend on your bit. So if you have a really long bit, then you can drop this down. And it's got a uh, self-locking lever here. Quick disconnect. There it is. So if I want to drop this part off, Put this one on. Nice. Alright, one final step here. We have our little name plate. Position that somewhere in here. And here it is. So this is the Shape Oko, the 3XXL, so the extra, extra large. And uh, so you have more of a cutting surface. And anyway, that's the complete build. Took it out of the box, put it together, and uh, I think it's going to work very well. So we have a lot of things to uh, plan out. So next uh, video, we'll get uh, some power hooked to this, get the software installed, and test it out. Thanks for watching.